Okay, and I'm standing out in front of the home of Teresa Hauser, and uh, Teresa has only been here one year. So what I want to stress to people is, if you say, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to start, you don't have to do as much as Teresa has, <laughs> but she can show you that how much can be done in a year if you put your mind to it. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about okay. it, Teresa? Well, the house was built in 1958, and I've been here, like you said, one year. When I moved in, we did a lot of renovations, and the number one thing we did was put the fence on the back. Well, they designed this beautiful fence, and when they were done, I was covered in mud. So I thought, now I've got to do something. So my motivation was one year, and I would be on the Bardstown Garden Tour. So that was pushing me. So then I literally started at one end of the yard and went around the back, one bag of mulch at a time, and I just went all the way around and had mulch, add flowers, mulch, add flowers. And then I got that done, and then I liked the nostalgic look. So then I started just going around, picking out old wheelbarrows and wagons and things, and took some things out of my mother's garage and put that together. And then it just fell together. There's no rhyme or reason. It just came together. So... Now, more than any of the other stops on the tour, you focused on annuals. Yes. So, why don't you tell us about some of your annuals? Okay, I'm an annual gardener. For me, it's simpler than doing perennials because you don't have as much maintenance. But I just go from garden center to garden center. I try to stay here locally in Bardstown. And I just picked out flowers that could tolerate the heat here in Bardstown. Uh, so, I knew my shady spots for my impatience. I knew my sunny spots for my begonias. And I'm very much into the bright colors. So, I just started coordinating along with the colors. And I knew I wanted to outline the whiskey barrel. So, like I said, it just kind of fell together with no rhyme or reason but I do love the annuals uh, basically because of the color but they are a lot of work a lot of water but I think it's well worth it in the long run of course, I see, you know, uh, in the past when we've uh, gone to different gardeners' homes, especially in, in the city, uh, they put up high fences and sort of made a, a little oasis. But you're kind of the opposite. You've got the seating area and everything, and you're just facing straight out to the road. Yes, I like that. I like the traffic. And I sit on this corner of Bardstown, and I feel like I beautify this corner of Bardstown, and I enjoy the traffic, and people now stop to see the flowers. But the, my yard is very narrow, so I was restricted in what I could do. So I just came all the way around. Plus, I had all that mud, so I had a lot of territory to cover. So that's... but I. I, my focus, I love this corner, and like I said, people stop every day to look at the flowers now, so it served its purpose. Excellent. Well, this is definitely a beautiful front bed, and I think now we're going to move around to the backyard. Okay. Okay, so we moved into Teresa's backyard, and you were mentioning uh, using some antiques. Uh, I can see you've decorated up some of this area with antiques, and uh, what's your motivation there? Well, a lot of it is things that I grew up with, if you want to call it antiques, but uh, such as the lawnmower in the corner was something that is a child that mother made us use, and we always kept that. And then the, the bicycle was my nieces and nephews. So basically, we, we raided mother's garage after she passed away and we kept the things and then as I did the garden I wanted to do the memory garden you know I want every time I look at something in my yard it tells a story and so everything in here had a purpose and I just started like I said no rhyme or reason it's here but uh, it was all things that belonged to the family uh, for the most part but let me just get this straight here you're telling me this whole area this whole thing you did in just one year right from start to finish I moved here on May 22nd I did the Bardstown garden tour as a tourist last year and then that was my motivation I came home and I looked at a fence and mud and I just got going and I did it literally one bag of mulch at a time is, was how I did it so let's pretend I'm just a gardener out there or, or a wannabe gardener okay and I've got this patch of grass now how do I convert just say one of these little areas how did I, how, what did you actually go through to convert it from that little area of grass into what we see now well what I did actually is spray the grass what weed was left there with some weed killer for a day or two and then I used newspaper and I took layers and layers of the Kentucky standard and I laid newspaper down and then I took bags of mulch just I used the cedar mulch that I purchased here locally and I literally poured it on top of the newspaper it's kept the weeds down I've not had any problem then as I had the flowers such as the hydrangeas that I'd purchased I would just push the mulch aside and plant them down into the hole and push the mulch around it um, and if I had an area such as where the Stella Dior's are, they were existing there. So then I went around them using the newspaper and the mulch. So I would tell someone to just do it very simple. Lay the newspaper down, put your mulch down, and put your flowers where you want them. And it, it works very quickly. <laughs> yeah, and obviously it's worked out pretty well. I'll just add a couple things from the Master Gardener perspective. Uh, you know, when you uh, be careful which pesticides, or not pesticides, uh, uh, herbicides you use when you're placing it on the lawn because some of them are a little more permanent. They may stay in the soil for up to a year, but uh, some of the more common ones like a Roundup does break down in two to three weeks. So you could start planting not too long after that. Uh, second thing is uh, she mentioned to put down the newspaper. Uh, newspaper is perfect. Cardboard also works really well. Uh, basically Basically, organisms in the soil, worms themselves, eat newspaper and cardboard. And so if you use those for your base, then that's the kind of mulch that will then disappear. It makes it a lot easier to plant into. Uh 
instead of say landscape fabric where you have to cut through the fabric that is a, a plastic base where it's going to be in the soil forever uh, newspaper and cardboard will eliminate the weeds especially with the mulch on top and keep that soil plantable for ever and actually it ends up adding nutrition to soil a lot of people compost newspaper yes 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 i've had very good luck with that uh, in my previous home and then coming down here i've always used newspaper i will not use plastic or landscape fabric or any of that simply because then if you do want to plant it's very easy to spray that newspaper apart without cutting and, and edging around it and then i just push the newspaper back so i'm very much into that and i usually don't use pesticides or herbicides i just throw newspaper down there and it works just as good if not better in the long run that's right, and I've noticed that uh, uh, when using uh, newspaper or cardboard, you do that, and, and within three, four months, it's just gone. It's already de decomposed back into the soil. It doesn't take years to disappear. It's gone fairly quickly. Yes, and I've used cardboard before, and the cardboard works excellent because you get a better coverage if you've got a large piece of cardboard. That's the trick, to, just to simplify it. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Teresa, for allowing us to uh, have your house on the tour this year. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're now at House 4, which is Phil and Nikki McCauley at 1119 Breezy Way here in Bardstown. And tell us a little about this property. Well, they've been here for about 20 years. Um, the, he, he likes the uh, antique uh, farm and he does uh, antique uh, gas pumps, which he restores himself. Absolutely fabulous collection. Um, her main interest is daylilies. Now, unfortunately, we talked about earlier that the winter was kind of harsh and slowed some things down. Uh, this garden is going to be really absolutely full of color in about a week and a half or two weeks. So we'll see a few specimens that have already opened up, but uh, a lot of the daylilies just haven't opened up yet. Uh, daylilies have three or four varieties that can spread over about a six or seven week period. And uh, some of those will bloom throughout that entire seven week period. Some of them just bloom for two or three weeks, but there's, uh, they're usually classified as early, mid and late season bloomers. And uh, many, many, many of hers are the mid and late season bloomers. So we haven't seen any of them come out yet, but we'll still take a look around and see if we can't find them. They also have decorated along the side of their garage with with uh, hanging baskets and uh, that's hanging baskets are always a way to break up an area uh, for an inexpensive shepherd's hook planted into the ground you can hang a couple baskets and plant just about whatever you want to in them you don't have to go to the store and buy the basket yourself or buy a basket already pre-made you can make it yourself uh, just keep in mind that whenever you do baskets or containers you're gonna have to water those almost daily on these 90 degree days in summer now we had talked about this property is quite a bit larger than the last property because uh, it's almost two acres we were talking about but also as you said at the beginning they've been working on this for a lot longer than the last property as well she had just been there for a year and did an amazing job with that year but they've been here now for about 20 years working on this property that's right and i think what's happened is along the way he's he's uh found the the uh, uh antique equipment like uh, uh wagon we'll see probably in a couple minutes and, and some other equipment and then she's developed the beds around that so each time a new piece of equipment comes in you can see where they've made a flower bed around it and uh, what it makes is a lot of little separate locations a lot of little separate spots that make the entire uh, property extremely attractive and as you said with the gardens that they have they're spread throughout the yard is there a technique in trying to decide where exactly to put it or is it purely purely aesthetics that you use well I guess it goes to what kind of garden you're designing. I mean, if it's a Japanese garden, everything has a place. Um, I think that uh, how you define your garden really is kind of up to the homeowner. Some people are very specific. Um, you know, if you have something that's completely random, you'd call it like a cottage garden. Uh, some people are very, very formal. And in a formal garden, you're going to have a lot of straight rows. You're going to have a lot of very closely trimmed hedges. Um, uh, but I think most people have something that adapts to the environment that they're in. If they have a long, flat backyard, you're going to end up with one set of beds. And if you have a very steep slope, like we're going to see later in the tour, you're going to have to design the beds around where the big trees are and where the slope is because uh, you're going to be limited by uh, the terrain itself. So really up to the individual homeowner and the environment they're in. All right, here we're standing next to a little trellis they've got in their, in their garden. And... Um, uh, one thing to note is that they've planted wisteria on a wooden frame and it's something we see sometimes but it's something to be aware of. Wisteria is a very powerful growing vine and as it does grow uh, the vine becomes thicker and thicker and it also tries to become straighter. As it does so it tends to pull down wooden structures. So while this will be in just a couple weeks absolutely beautiful its lifespan somewhat limited by the fact that 
the trellis itself is built fairly fairly light construction. Uh, a trellis like this is really nice with, uh, say, a climbing rose or a grapevine, but with wisteria, the wisteria will tear it down after a fairly short number of years. So if you're considering wisteria, just consider putting in 4x4 posts or larger, uh, or even using steel posts to support the weight and strength of the vines as they come out of the ground.